So uh, a couple of interesting uh, aspects of this anonymous story, or I should say lulsec. As uh, we talked about earlier in the week, the FBI apparently had turned lulsec leader Sabu, Hector Monsegur, a... Uh, United States citizen living in New York, Lower East Side, I guess. He was uh, the titular leader of LulzSec. And apparently they had arrested him uh, over six months ago, sometime, I guess, in August. And he uh, snitched on about five other members of LulzSec. But the Guardian has some new information that's come out today, and it's interesting. In a U.S. court document, the FBI's informant, quote, acting under the direction of the FBI, helped facilitate the publica uh, publication, which was thought to be an embarrassing leak of conference call between the FBI and the U.K.'s serious and organized uh, crime agency in February. Now, we covered this. And apparently... Apparently, it, it appears that the FBI basically just let Sabu on to record it and release it. And I guess ostensibly to maintain Sabu's bona fides. I'm not sure what the theory is behind this. Or maybe it was uh, to make the LulzSec people, um, it was to lull them into a state of confidence. I'm not quite sure. Well, I remember the morning that we we so we were listening to the release tape. We we th what was in the release tape was the tape they released was nothing special, but just the fact they leaked this, we were we were like, wow. Yes. So I mean, this is definitely made Sabu a legendary figure. I mean, it definitely. It's hard to know exactly what the theory was behind it. Maybe we'll find out later. But what's really interesting is that a second document shows that Monsegur provided a an FBI-owned computer to facilitate the release of 5 million... Now, this says provided, Ann. So, I can't tell if Monsegur gave the FBI computer to uh, the person who, reputedly, who, who reportedly hacked and released the Stratfor emails, or if he was provided an FBI computer. But nevertheless, the FBI seemed to be completely aware of the leaking of Stratfor emails. And they were leaked, you'll recall, or at least published, by WikiLeaks. And so, what it appears is that the FBI was using this as an opportunity to find out how that relationship between Anonymous or any leaker, for that matter, and WikiLeaks works. Because you got to remember, they are still trying to get Julian Assange on the uh, State Department leaks. And they are still gunning after him. And they are trying to prove that in some way the relationship between the leaker the whistleblower, and WikiLeaks is somehow different than the numerous occasions of a weaker or a whistleblower giving information to the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Guardian, or whatnot. They are desperately trying to find something to differentiate it so that they can charge Julian Assange. And if this report from the Guardian and characterizing this document, this FBI document, is accurate, this is probably what they're doing and what they were doing. To find something in that process that they can extrapolate to the process that Bradley Manning, who is supposedly the leaker of those State Department cables to WikiLeaks, used and could somehow implicate WikiLeaks in this. So... Interesting, and uh, we'll continue to follow this. Yeah, I mean, on, on the large scale of things, you got to assume they really couldn't have cared too much about taking down members of Anonymous and LulzSec, and it was mostly about 
Julian Assange on WikiLeaks. I, I mean, I think that's fairly apparent. I mean, I think that that had to have been a big part of it because I don't think it's a coincidence that they rolled up um, they rolled up these members of LulzSec after Stratfor. In other words, the Stratfor thing, uh, was, the hack obviously took place months ago. I think they were waiting for it to get to WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks to publish it before they rolled up uh, these LulzSec people because they wanted to uh, have the entire sort of food chain and that process. So it'll be interesting to see um, uh, what comes out next.